So I came across this queue website on which a countdown is displayed. Usually I do not pay much attention to the queue movement, but I decided to see if there was any significance to this countdown and was very surprised at what I found. The countdown takes us to 6 p.m. Universal Time on November 28th. So what is significant about this date? This is exactly 45 days down to the minute after the maximum solar eclipse that occurred on October 14th. Why is this so important? The Bible refers to this time in Daniel 12 and Matthew 24, where both of these chapters speak about a period when the entire world would go through a time where normal life would end and when a substance would be released into the population that would bring about emptiness, and all of this being brought about through deception. That time, as we all know by now, involved the pandemic that was declared on March 11th, 2020. In Daniel 12, very specific day counts are provided that are associated with the duration of this period. Gabriel assigns 1,290 days to the length of this time. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be 1,290 days. In Matthew 24, a little extra bit of information tells us that the end of this period of testing is marked with a solar eclipse which occurs immediately at the end of this period. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So if the 1290 days ended at the time of the solar eclipse's maximum, there are 45 days left until the promise of Daniel 12 verse 12 is reached. Blessed is he that waiteth, and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. If we add forty-five days to the time of the maximum solar eclipse that occurred on October 14th, then we arrive at 6 p.m. Universal Time on November 28th, the exact time that this countdown on the Cube official website is pointing to. Isn't that interesting? Some of the messages that are associated with updates that have been posted on this countdown certainly show that those who have posted this countdown are expecting something of biblical proportions to occur at this time. From a biblical perspective, we know exactly what this is all about. Are you ready for what is coming? How do you make sure that you are ready for Jesus when He comes? We have to obtain salvation, and how to obtain it is explained in Romans 10 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the Scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. This is the first step, and this makes you part of God's faith harvest. Once you are saved, you also have to be baptized, not to add to your salvation, but to allow the Holy Spirit to fill you and to operate through you. Without a baptism, you will not receive any gifts of the Spirit, and as a child of God, it is really important to ensure that you are baptized once you are saved. Baptism serves to equip you and to increase your effectiveness in this world when ministering to others. Then Peter said unto them, Repent! and to be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Jesus paid an incredible price to save us, and Romans 12 tells us that it is our reasonable service to present our bodies as living sacrifices to God in return. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Could we simply continue in this world to live like the rest of the world once we are saved? It is certainly possible to live that way, but we know that God will separate His harvest into two groups. 
both of which are saved or have received salvation. If we are living our lives in devotion to Him, He will know us as a bridegroom knows His bride-to-be. But if we live as the world, we may hear Him tell us that He never knew us, because we were never intimate with Him. If our reasonable service to God is to offer our bodies to Him as a living sacrifice, how could it be seen as a sacrifice if we continue to live just as the lost would live? So many comment on the videos that I make concerning salvation and that it is important to ensure that one only believes and do absolutely nothing else. It would seem that abstaining from sin to the best of our ability would in their eyes count against us as works that one would do to somehow earn part of one's salvation. This could not be further from the truth. If you are in an intimate relationship with someone, you will know that your actions can affect the other person's feelings that you are intimate with. If you say something to them that hurts them, what would you do if you want to maintain an intimate relationship with them? Would you continue your day as if nothing happened or would you apologize and try to fix the problem? The same is true for our relationship with our Savior. He hates sin and if we continue to sin without any care of how that makes him feel, how long will we maintain an intimate relationship with him? He even told us what to do when we sin and we read about that in 1 John 1. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar, and His word is not in us. We all sin, but Jesus is coming back for a spotless bride, and only He can cleanse us and ensure that we are without spot or wrinkle when the doors to the marriage are opened. It is up to us to allow Him to cleanse us by following His instructions as indicated. He can only wash us clean of our sins if we confess our sins to Him. It is not a matter of salvation, but a matter of intimacy. And only those who are known by Jesus, those who are intimate with Him, will be allowed into the wedding and will be considered His portion of the harvest. If you want to ensure that you are ready, please watch this video for more information. I hope this video has blessed you and I look forward to seeing all my brothers and sisters in the clouds really soon. I certainly cannot wait and I am really excited to discover what our bridegroom had prepared for us. Until next time or until we meet in the air, God bless.